hello everyone welcome back for another video uh, today we'll be doing taking off substructure works with columns and as you can see on our plan today it has a recess at the center and an additional wall uh, passing uh, at the center towards the recess uh, our plan today is kind of unique because you can see the columns are are at the walls and also they extend outside the walls at the recess here we can see that the uh, distance is given from the wall to the inside of the wall all right then at the section we have been given section aa whereby we are shown that this is the section then uh, behind it we can see the uh, section of the column which extends downwards here this way so this is the takeoff that you'll be doing today Thank you so much for all those who are coming back. Uh, can you remember to subscribe for those who haven't subscribed? And if you're new here, uh, welcome to Easy QS channel. Uh, this is a channel where we assist students to do their uh, quantity surveying exams in the easiest way possible. We help you to revise. Uh, we teach you concepts that could, could have bypassed you in class. And we are here to answer all your questions. So in case you have any difficulties in your class, work in your assignments so feel free to contact us we have given our email uh, and also uh, we you can just write it in the comment section give us your feedback if you like this video uh, you can like the video you can just make a comment uh, we appreciate all your compliments we appreciate all your questions every question that has been asked we always note it down and for the videos that you've asked for we are preparing them for you there's no question that will be left unanswered so be patient we will get to your question and uh, continue practicing on the videos that we have given you uh, continue doing all the practice uh, so that you can become uh, the quantity surveyors that you want to be so we will just start off uh, remembering that we have some um, you can join we have some packs for you you can join our community uh, by joining our packs whereby we offer you our presentations uh, if you want them we have the first pack which is kind of cheap and we have given you a discount and it goes for only one dollar so if you want our presentations uh, we have given the pack kindly check on your screen on that link just click on it uh, i'll be able to get to see our packs and if you're interested uh, kindly join so that you can move on together even for those who are doing online training we are here for you uh, we are continuing with our classes thank you for all those who have joined uh, even as we continue we hope that we are doing our very well best to prepare you for exams so let's start get started uh, for today's video so when you're given such a plan which has columns mm -hmm, and a wall at the center here uh, the, there's a procedure that you'll use in taking off it is good to write this procedure down so that whenever you get to that stage you can refer how it follows each other and so that you can ensure that you have taken off every item so we always start with site clearance as long as you're told that the site is bushy then we excavate the oversight the oversight is there uh, vegetable soil that was holding the vegetation you know it is not good for uh it is not good for construction so we always excavate the oversight and mostly in the notes you'll be told uh topsoil mm -hmm. is 150 millimeters or the the thickness eh? so you will excavate that depth of soil then uh, before you go to excavating the column bases, you should be able to reduce the level up of the site up to where the hard core will be laid. So uh, after site clearance, you excavate all the vegetable soil, then you reduce the level up to where the uh, hard core shall be laid. And remember, this reduced level, uh -huh, it's about a bit lower here than the ground level. So you'll take the ground level, you excavate the uh, oversized soil, vegetable soil, like here you told it's 150, then you uh, take the difference between the reduced level and the ground level. After you subtract the to top soil, do you need to reduce the level again? That one you have to calculate. Alright, let's continue. The, con the procedure, the next one we shall excavate for column bases. Then we shall excavate for foundation trenches. We shall do cracking and strutting. This is the support of the 
uh, trenches and the column bases so that they don't collapse you remember uh, soil can collapse if it's not supported depending on even the depth and the type of soil so we then we do the concrete work we shall start with blinding you can see here there's a layer of blinding uh, concrete blinding we start with blinding then we take off the column bases then we shall take the off the mass concrete in foundation strip all around then we shall do vibrated reinforced concrete in the column and you can follow using my pointer i'm a red pointer you can be able to follow what i'm doing then there's the foundation walling here we can see this foundation wall then we have the hardcore then we have the maram blending then we have the dpm and the anti-termite mm -hmm. you can see the polythene sheeting on 25 millimeters thick maram all right then we have the formwork to hold the concrete then we have the floor bed then we shall reinstate the soil all around all these things we have done this in our previous videos if you want to see our previous videos that you have done on takeoff kindly uh there's a link on your screen go to that playlist you'll be able to see all our takeoff videos i think that one will help you very well in your revision go through all our videos uh calculating them you can even take the diagram you kind of try doing it alone then you can just use our video to mark and that way you shall be perfect and ready for exams so uh, when we are starting with site clearance, we always measure the, this one. We shall be measuring like a rectangle. Then we shall deduct the void. All right. So if we are measuring the rectangle for site clearance, the external length is 10500. The external length is 5500. So uh, if you see the 5500, it's outside the column and outside the column. If you look at the wind side, the column extends by 100. The column extends by 100. So the external dimensions of the wind side is 5500 minus 100 here and 100 here. It remains with 5300. Then when you are doing site clearance, we always add the projection uh, for the strip. Or we, we just say the spread. Okay, now we shall deduct the, we shall add the spread for the wall you can see the wall is 200 millimeters then we have an extension for how much you can see the foundation strip it's six millimeters 600 millimeters wide so what is the spread on the outside it's 600 minus 200 divided by two so this side is 200 so for the strip we shall add 200 both sides of the wind then after the strip let me use my pen to draw after the strip the strip is getting up to there and up to date a straight line i'm not able to draw a straight line it's a straight line so from here after the strip to the end of the column and this other side we shall add, add the spread uh -huh, for this side of the column because uh finally when you are clearing the site we should consider even the spread due to the base of the column so this means that we shall clear the site up to uh, like this rectangle that I'm doing here in red meaning uh -huh, let me first draw the rectangle um, we shall clear the sides giving an allowance what is this allowance between the wall and the uh, where we shall clear the sides this allowance is for the spread first we shall give this the spread for the wall then this other spread here is for the, the spread for the column so how do we calculate the total spread? The total spread, if we are to extend from this the section, the wall is up to here, where the column uh -huh, is. So if the wall is up to here, the spread is up to the end of the column base. So the column base is 1,000. 1,000, uh -huh, we, we, we subtract the thickness of the wall, which is 200, it shall be 800. 800, then we shall divide by two sides so for the width for the length it shall be a total of 400 for each side so this 200 200 400 for each side so both sides they will be multiplied by two or you can do as i have done here the length is 10500 then the projection for the strip is 200 on both sides then you will just come and find the projection for the column base here you shall take a hundred minus 400 
no, a thousand minus six hundred for the foundation strip. A thousand minus six hundred is four hundred. Four hundred divided by two is two hundred. So the projection for the strip is two hundred, and the projection for the column is two hundred. So uh, both sides we shall add two hundred for the strip, which gets us to four hundred. Then both sides we shall add two hundred for the column, which gets us to four hundred. So the total for the length that we shall clear is eleven three hundred. Let's go to the width. For the width, I have already told you to note that uh, the width is 5500, bearing in mind this, there is an extension of 100 on this side and 100 on the other side. Alright, so the external dimensions of the walls on the width side is 5300, which comes from 5500 minus uh, 200. We get 5300. Then the strip foundation. Uh -huh. The strip foundation, if the column itself is 300, 300. all right, you can see that our column base is here. Column base is 1000 by 1200 millimeters. So uh, the strip foundation uh, for the wind side, you should be able to see it, that the column shall be 300, unlike the length side, which was 200. So if the uh, column is 300, what is the projection that we shall experience for the for the uh -huh. first we do for the strip footing then you go to the uh, for the column base the strip footing will still be 600 so 600 uh, minus uh, 200 for the wall the wall shall on, on be 200 600 minus 200 shall be 400 400 divided by 2 shall be 200. So the strip both sides, we shall add 200. Remember, this one was the dimensions of the external dimensions of the wall on the wind side. So we add for the strip. Now we want to know, after the strip footing, what will be the projection uh, towards the base of the column? This one is 1200, the width of the column base. If it is 1200, then we subtract and the, pro the strip footing, which is 600, we shall remain with 1200 minus 600, 600. 600 divided by 2, uh, the spread for the column shall be 300 on both sides. So we shall also add two, 300 times 2. So the total for the wind for set clearance shall be 5300 plus 400 plus 600. We get 6300. All right, so the dimensions for size clearance shall be the length shall be 11.3 and the width shall be 6.3. So we shall clear the site of all bushes, grass, undergrowth, and burn away all arising. All right, so um, the next step, we shall reduce the level up to where we can lay the hard core. How do we know how much depth we shall reduce the level and if it is necessary? This is how we test. We shall check the depth that we have. All right. So we are told that 100 millimeters oversized concrete. Alafu, we have uh, 25 millimeters maram blinding. Then we have the hardcore, which is 275. So we shall add all those. We get 400 millimeters, the total depth for all these layers. Then we are given above the ground level, it's 250. Then we are reduced. We have already. Okay, uh, we shall uh, we shall <laughs> we shall uh, excavate away the top soil by 150 millimeters. So if we above the ground is 250, how much will remain uh, if we take the total uh, thickness of the layers, which is 400 minus 250 above the ground? What is the depth below the soil that we have to go? We shall take 400 minus 250 we get 150 millimeters. We have excavated a uh, vegetable soil 150 millimeters. So 150 minus 150, it's zero millimeters. This means that after removing the vegetable soil at a depth of 150 millimeters, we will already be in the reduced level. I hope that is clear. The reduced level is the layer level where we lay our hard cone. So we wanted to know how much depth we shall be able to excavate from the ground level, uh -huh. then after the topsoil has been excavated, the remaining depth is the one that will reduce the level to that depth. Now, uh, the total uh, depth of these layers is 400. We deduct 250 above the ground, so it remains 150. 
150 millimeters, we have already excavated it uh, by uh, take, removing all the vegetable soil. So that means that the level that we have attained after removing the vegetable soil is also the reduced level. So after clearing the site with these dimensions, we shall just excavate away 150 millimeters deep to remove vegetable soil and deposit in soil heaps on site average 100 millimeters distance from the site. If we were to reduce the, uh, uh, the level by any depth, we could add another item below here, saying that we need to reduce the depth by this depth to uh, reduce level. All right, I hope that is very clear. So we have cleared the site, assuming that it's a rectangle, and we have given an allowance for the foundation spread. So uh, the area that we have cleared according to our dimensions is that area I have drawn using the red rectangle. But you can note that here, uh, where I am pointing using my pointer is a void. It's outside the building because a building is usually marked by the walls. So here inside the walls is where we have the building, but here is outside the building. So we need to subtract this area, which we call the void. So uh, when we subtract that area, uh, we shall uh, give an extension for the uh, foundation spread because uh, the walls will have a spread. These walls, uh -huh, the ones I'm pointing using my pointer, must have a spread all around. That's why if we are coming to subtract the area uh -huh, of the void, it shall be this area that I'm painting using my yellow pen. So this one will be the area of the void. So we need to take the dimensions of the void. All right, so what was the length of the void? Okay, I've finished painting. So the, how will it affect the void? This from here outside the wall to here outside the wall was 3400. So we shall deduct the spread, this side, which is spread for the strip 200, spread for the column 200. That is 400 on both sides. 400 times 2 is 800. So that 400 minus 800, we shall remain it 2600 for the, for the length. Then the width now. The width we have already been measured for uh, from outside the wall to the inside of the wall. So, and we shall deduct this spread here from 2500, then we shall add the thickness of the wall plus the spread. All right. So, um, coming to this space here for the spread, which has been 2500, we shall take um, 2500 minus this foundation spread. The foundation spread here, remember it was the spread for the strip footing, 200, then for the column base, which measures 1200 on the wind side, so on one side it shall be 300. 300 plus for the strip 200, it shall be 500. So the spread here, we shall give an allowance of 500, which is 2500 minus 500, 2000. Then from here, we shall add the width of the wall, the wall is 200, then we add 500. The same foundation spread that was uh, compensated here, we shall remove it here because uh, when we were marking this rectangle in red, we had already added the foundation spread. So 2500 minus 500 plus 200 plus 500 because the wall was not in inside. Use this this thickness of this one. The, the thickness of this wall. Uh -huh, was not included, but now we shall have to include the thickness of this wall. So it shall be 2500 minus 500 plus 200 plus 500, which gives us 2.7. So that's why we have 2.7 here. I hope that is clear. We shall now go to measuring the depth of the column base. How much shall we excavate to get it to the column base? This one, we shall first uh, calculate the total depth from above the oversized concrete to below the base. We shall add all these dimensions. So 50 plus 250 plus 600 plus 150 plus 800 plus 250. We get 2100 meters, millimeters depth. 
So our coat is the depth to the column base. We shall deduct 250 above the ground, then we deduct 150 for the top swing. We remain at 1700. So to get to the base of the column, we shall excavate 1.7 meters. So, and we usually measure in stages of 1.5 meters. So after we deduct the first 1.5 meters, we shall remain with 200 millimeters. Then we are told that this rock commences 1,000 millimeters from the ground level. So we shall ask ourselves, what is the depth from the column base to the ground level, which it is 2,100, we deduct 250. 2100 is from uh, uh, oversight to below the column base, then we shall deduct 250 above the ground level. So 2100 minus 250, we shall get 1850. So 1850, uh, we shall deduct 1000 millimeters because we are told that rock commences 1000 millimeters below the ground. So we shall remain with 850 millimeters. All right. So Therefore, we shall book uh, for the first 1.5 meters deep. They say they, we shall take the length of the column base, the width of the column base, then the depth of excavation. We shall say excavate for column bases not exceeding 1.5 meters deep, commencing from strip level, and you add the soil to refill and ram. For the next range, you shall take the column length, base length, column base wind, then the remaining depth, which is 0 0.2. Excavate for column bases commencing from 1.5 meters deep and not exceeding 3 meters deep. And that soil, you shall add it to refill and ram. Then uh, we shall go to uh, ex taking off for the rock, excavation for the rock. It's usually done as an extra over. Uh, for, we shall take the length of the column base, the wind of the column base, then the depth of the uh, rock. So remember, we had already done this one. So you just take it from the, our calculations, then book it here. Now we shall excavate for the strip footing. The strip footing shall be all around the building. But remember, when excavating the strip footing, we shall deduct the uh, length for the column bases. So first we need to know the depth of the strip footing that we shall excavate. From the ground level to the bottom of the strip footing, it's 950. And we had already excavated 150 millimeters topsoil. So the depth from the ground uh, under the topsoil shall be 700 because we have found the difference. Uh, for the strip footing, to get the total volume of soil, we shall take the center line or around, uh -huh, or around, even for this wall, all right? Then we shall deduct, uh, remember we always have to, we shall take after finding the center line, we shall multiply by the width of the trench, uh -huh, then we multiply by the depth. So what is the center line? We shall calculate the center line. The external dimensions of the length is for 10,500. If we add the spread on both sides, 200 on both sides, it shall be 10,900. For the wind, with the external dimensions of the column is 5,500. So for the walls, it shall be 5,500 minus 100 on both sides, which gives us 5,300 plus a spread of 200, 200, we get 5,700. So the total perimeter for the outside of the spread for the strip footing shall be 33,200. Then we shall add these walls, which we had found when we were deducting the voids, the wind was 2700. So when we add 2400, then after that, uh, the total that we shall get, we deduct a number of corners times the thickness of this foundation spread. Number of corners is number of external corners, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then we deduct the number of internal corners, 1 and 2, we get 4. Then we multiply by the width of this foundation, uh, strip footing, which is 600, we get 2400. We shall get a total of um, 36200, because it is this one, deduct this one, that is 6200. Then uh, we shall deduct the for the uh, foundation column basis. So uh, for this column, it was 1200 by 1000 so for every corner uh, this the corn the column will take half of it is 600 the other one 500 so for all corner columns it shall be 1100 so how many color corner columns do we have we have one two three four 
five, six, seven, eight. Eight corners. We eight columns are at the corners, so they shall reduce the the strip by eleven hundred. Eleven times eight, we shall get eighty eight hundred. Then we have two col columns here, which will reduce the the spread the the footing by one thousand and one thousand, which is two thousand. So we shall add two thousand. Mm -hmm. So the total shall be ten eight hundred. So uh, when we add these two, we shall get the uh, center line for the trench. Then we shall add this wall here. It has a strip footing. So the strip footing we shall deduct for this footing. This wall here has a spread of 200, and this wall here has a spread of 200. So if we take this length of the wall here, which is calculated by taking 5500, after two, we deduct 200 for for the columns, we remain with 5300. Then uh, we shall deduct 200 for this wall because the dimensions of 2500 begins from inside. Uh -huh. Then uh, we deduct 2500 up to here so the length from here to uh, here will be 2500 shall be uh, 5500 for this one we deduct the columns 5300 then we deduct this wall of external wall it's 2000 uh -huh, which is 200 then we deduct up to here 2500 then we shall deduct the thickness of this wall together with the spread and the thickness of this wall together with the spread. So the thickness of this wall, let me use my highlighter to show you the walls I'm talking about. The thickness of this wall plus the spread here is 400 and the thickness of this wall plus the spread is 400. So we shall deduct another 800. We get 1800. So uh, we shall add uh, the center line here plus 1800 to get the total center line for the trench. Now we shall go. So we shall book the dimensions for the excavation of the trenches. We shall start with the center line, the width of the trench, and the depth of excavation. Excavate foundation trench, commencing and strip level, not exceeding 1.5 meters deep, and the soil we shall add it to referring ram. Then we shall uh, pluck and start to sides of excavation trenches. Uh, this one we shall just write an item because this one you can only measure uh, well when you get to site. So in our SMM, you just write item, then we'll provide a provisional sum. This is together with the item for keeping the trenches free from all waters. Now we shall go to concrete, which where we shall begin with the blinding. Uh, the concrete blinding is usually measured in meters squared. So we shall take the length and the width of the column base, then we multiply by the number of columns. 50 millimeters concrete, ratio 1 is to 4 is to 8, blinding under column basis. And this soil, because it has been replaced by the concrete, we shall deduct it from RFR. And when we are measuring the soil, we measure it in volume. So we shall multiply by 0 0.05 to convert it to volume. Then the same volume of soil, we shall add it to cut away, meaning that we don't need the soil anymore in the site. Now we can take it away from the site. Alright, then we shall go to the mass concrete in the column basis. You can see that it measures to 50 millimeters thick. And because it is... Um, 
the mass concrete, uh, we shall measure it in terms of uh, volume. So the length of the column base, the width, and the concrete uh, whose thickness is 250. Then how many columns? 10. Vibration reinforced concrete ratio 1 is to 2 is to 4 in column bases and that soil which has been replaced by the concrete, you deduct it from RFR and add it to cut away. Then the vibrated reinforced concrete in foundation trench, uh, we shall take the uh, center line for the foundation trench, the width of the foundation trench and the uh, thickness of the concrete in the trenches uh, which is uh, 0 0.15. Maybe you can comment in the uh, comment section should we take this concrete as volume or as area because normally uh, we take it as volume but th in this case we can see that uh, the concrete here it is 250 for the con column base then was for the strip footing is 150 kindly let's discuss uh, should it should we book it in volume or should we just measure it in uh, area, then we indicate it in the uh, description column that uh, vibration reinforced concrete, uh, 1 is to 2 is to 4 uh, in column bases, 20 to 50 millimeters thick. Kindly let us discuss that so that you can come to an agreement according to you, how you understand the SMM, what does it state. All right, so we shall move. Now we shall take off the concrete in columns going upward. Remember the concrete in column will go up to where we shall have the oversight concrete. The oversight concrete will be above the column. So we shall take the depth, the height of the column from below the oversight concrete to up to the where the base of the column begins. So what is that depth first of all? This total depth is 2100. 2100 we shall deduct 100 for the oversight so concrete. Then we shall deduct 50 and 250 for the concrete. So the, the total depth shall be at 1700 so that's when we have the depth then the length and the width of the column how many columns 10 columns we written reinforced concrete ratio 1 is to 2 is 4 in columns then uh, this volume of concrete that has re uh, replaced the, the soil in the columns we shall deduct it from RFR and add it to cut away now we shall measure the sewn formwork for the uh, column basis uh, remember we have 10 columns then uh, for these columns at the ends, uh, if I am to sketch, the column bases have an outlet like this to the strip footing. Then we have the column base like that. Then like this. Like this. So uh, this column base has an opening here and it has an opening on this other side. So what is this opening? Uh, this opening for it's for the strip. The strip, uh, the width of the strip is 600. So it opens 6, 0 0.6 and the depth is 0 0.25. Two times on the 10 columns. Because even the ones that are here, this column, it has an opening this way. Then it has a column like this. Then like this. So these openings are the ones that we shall subtract the formwork for. So 10 columns, two openings, each measures like this. Okay, then we go to some formwork to vertical sides of the foundation strip. Uh, to the vertical sides of the foundation strip, then we shall take the center line of the strip footing where we shall have the strip. Then uh, we shall multiply by the depth of that strip footing that will hold the concrete. We multiply by two, two sides of the formwork. All right, then we shall go to formwork to vertical sides of the column, the column which is starting here and ending here. The perimeter of the column is 0 0.8, then the depth of the column up to below the oversight is this, so we multiply by 10. So, so, on, so on formwork to vertical sides of the column. Now we shall take off the walling, the walling which need just to find the center line of the wall, then the depth of the wall. So the external dimensions of the length is 10500. For the width is 5300 because it's 5500 to the outside the columns. Now we need for the external width. So we shall deduct 100 this side and 100 this side, which is 5300. So the total perimeter shall be 31600. Then we need to add this recess here, 2700. Then we shall deduct uh, four corners, uh, which comes from six 
external corners minus two internal corners, we divide, we multiply by the width of the trench. If you want uh, the video for center line, kindly uh, find it on your screen. Uh, go and watch that video so that it doesn't have give you problems to find the center line. So let's continue. This decision we shall get 2400. Once we deduct it from that, we shall get that for 600. Then uh, we need to deduct the area of the columns. The columns have replaced uh, in the walling. Uh, in all columns, we have 10 columns. And in every col column, it has reduced uh, the walling by 200 on the length and 200 on the width. Now, and because it is the center line that you are looking for, each column uh, has reduced for the corner columns to from the outside the column to the center it's a hundred then this side a hundred so all corner column has replaced the width of the walls by 200 then for these columns which are not at the center the length of the column is 200 and 200 so also for them they have reduced the length of the walls by 200 so we have 10 columns and these 10 columns are reducing the length of the walls uh, by 200 so because it's the center line so it is reduced by a total of 2000 so once we get the difference which is that to 600 we shall add for this wall here this wall here uh, its dimensions is we shall take 5500 for the total then we deduct 100 100 for the columns to get the external dimensions then uh, we shall deduct 200 for this wall here external wall here then we shall deduct 2500 to get to this uh, wall then uh, so the remaining it's from here to outside here but we want the center line of the wall okay so uh, now because we have that length we shall deduct 100 this side and 100 this end and it shall give us 2400 once we add it here we shall get a total length of the wall is that five that was it. So the walling we shall measure in area, the center line times the depth of the wall. This 800 we have got it from uh, the total depth from the strip footing here up to the top of the concrete is 200 plus 800 plus 150. We get 1050. Then we shall deduct the 100 for the oversight concrete and 150 for the strip footing concrete. So the total we shall deduct is 250. So 1050 minus 250, it's 800. So 800 is the height of the walls. All right. So it's 200 millimeters thick stone walling in cement sand, uh, mortar joints in foundation. Can you remember that this is among the many videos we have done for the substructure? So in case you find us moving very fast, kindly go and watch our previous videos. Those ones we move it a bit slower. Uh, the those ones could be a bit easier for you, so that as you graduate, you come and cover this uh, video. Okay, so we shall go to height of refill and ram. After constructing our wall, we need to refill that. Uh, soil up to the reduced level. So what is the volume of the wall up to the reduced level that has replaced that soil so that you can deduct it from refill and run so which will be used for refilling and add it to cut away the soil that will be disposed away from the site. Uh, the height of the wall is 800. So uh, to get the height of the wall up to the reduced level, we shall just deduct the total for the hard coal and for the maram. Total for hard coal, which is 275 plus maram, which is 25, it shall be 300. So it shall be 800 minus 300, 500. So the total center line times the width of the wall times the depth, which is 0 0.5, it's the volume of soil that shall be used, they shall be replaced by the wall and shall this volume of soil, we shall deduct it from refill and run and add it to cut away. All right, so we shall go to a uh, hard coal and maram blinding. Uh, the hard coal shall be laid inside the walls, uh -huh, together with the maram blinding. So what are the dimensions? So we shall check for the rectangle. For the rectangle, the external dimensions is 10,500. So the internal dimensions, we shall take 10,500. We deduct the walls, which is uh, 400. Uh, we shall get 1.1. All right, we have not forgot that we have this wall. This one we shall deduct its area here. So uh, the width shall be how much? The width from outside the column to outside the column is 5,500. We deduct the column 100, 100 shall remain 5,300. Then we deduct the walls. 
which is 400, we shall remain in 4.9, alright? Then we come and deduct for the void. Uh, for the void, the length here is 3400. So we add the walls because the walls, we shall not do hardcore on the walls. So the total void, void that we shall deduct shall be uh, that 400, uh, you add uh, 200, 200, we get 3.8. Then the width shall be 2500, you add 200, it shall be um, 2.7. All right, then we shall deduct the area of the wall. This wall here, whose uh, length was 2.2, which whose length is 2.2. Then the area it occupies is 0 0.2. So that is the area. So it shall be 200 millimeters approved hardcore wall, uh, rammed and compacted, and 50 millimeters thick approved maram blinding. 25 millimeters thick approved maram blinding and treat hardcore with approved insecticide. Then you deduct this area on the void and wall for the last three items. Next is the DPM together with the concrete. It's always laid uh, just like the maram and the hardcore, just that it will go above the walls. So what is the dimensions of the length? It is already 10,500, including the walls. But for the wind, it includes the extensions of the column. But we are only interested with the walls. So it shall take 5,500 minus 100 this side and 100 this side. So it's 5.3. Then we shall deduct uh, that area for the for the void. Remember, the area is measured uh, when you go outside this. If it's hard for you, can they extend it with a pen? And you shall be able to see these areas very clearly. This is the area that we have marked. When we say the external dimensions, this is what we meant. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but here it is outside. Outside here, just that I can't draw a straight line. So uh, when we are deducting for the void, we shall deduct outside the walls. All right. So what is the dimensions? This is 3.4. Then this one is. Uh, 2500 uh, then you add for the wall 200 because 2500 was from inside the wall and yet the DPM and the wall then the concrete covers even the wall so 2500 plus 200 2.7 so it's a thousand gauge DPM these descriptions usually get them from the drawings a thousand gauge DPM with 150 millimeters wrap laps and 150 millimeters mass concrete it is 100 millimeters on the drawing mass concrete. Ratio 1 is to 3 is to 6. Floor bed laid on hard coal and finished to receive floor screed. Then you deduct the detail on void for the last two. The last item that we shall measure is the formwork. Uh, for the formwork, we only measure the external dimensions coming all around to hold the concrete. Uh, it's formwork to hold the slab. So we shall take the external dimensions of the length, the external dimensions of the width. The perimeter is that 1600. Then we shall add 2700 this way. Why are we taking 2700? Because 2500 is up to the internal of the wall. So we had to add to the other 200 to get to the external. Formwork is always the, you, we always use the external dimensions. So the total is that 7 linear meters. So formwork, to rest angels of floor bed 75 to 150 millimeters wide. Then uh, now we need to restate the soil all around. Remember we reduced, we cleared the site, then we, we removed 150 millimeters of soil. Now we need to return it. How do we return it? We find the centering of restatement, which is usually you walk all around. Sorry, you walk all around the building. The center line. Uh, working at the center of the foundation spread. My mouse can't draw this thing very accurately, but I'm just trying to show you this thing should be perfect. It should be going, it's a straight line. So, uh, the center line of brain statement is usually at the center. Here, we usually have this foundation spread. It was going like this. So, the center line of brain statement is usually at the center of this line that I'm drawing here. So, center line of reinstatement is this internal line here. So, uh, how do we calculate it? We take the external dimensions, 10,500, we add the spread, 200 on both sides, we get 400. For the width, we have 5,300 external dimensions of the wall. Then we add the foundation spread, both sides, 200, 200, we get 5,700. So, once we add, we get the total perimeter is 3,200. 
okay so after we get that we shall add 2 times 2900 2900 are from here so going outside uh-huh it's 2900 because of the spread of 200 5800 then uh the total we shall deduct a uh, number of corners times the wind of the foundation spread the foundation spread um, wind was 200 so we shall deduct 800 we get to that 8 200 so the center line of reinstatement times the wind of the foundation spread on the outside part is 0 0.2 uh huh remember that in this inside we have already laid the hard coal and the maram so we have no space to reinstate the soil we are reinstating soil only on the outside then the depth is the top soil that we had excavated so we deduct this soil from the soil heaps which we had said after excavating the top soil we add it to cut away we shall cut remove it from cut away and add it to refill and ram because that soil we shall use it to uh, refill for reinstatement so that was the end of that video it has been quite long and it has been a bit so complicated that drawing is a bit complicated um, because it is a bit tricky because of the columns which were extending outside so it was a question from one of you i hope you're satisfied can you go through it again and again in case of any questions kindly let's write them in the comment section uh, so that we can be able i always reply to all the your comments kindly write them in the comment section if you like this video tell us we really value your feedback whatever it is for positive or negative kindly write it in the comment section we will be able to improve so if you need another video kindly let us know and all the best in the exams can you refer us to your classmates and your classmates uh, bring them to our channel so that you can be a good community and so that you can grow together all the best thank you for watching